My GoPro's recording. My phone is recording high quality MP3. I've been having audio issues which I'm going to explore in tomorrow's vlog. I needed a sync clap just now. I should have done a sync clap at the start. Take two, coming up. Sync clap done on this and this. So I need to learn how to sync these two now in the edit, Final Cut Pro 10. Anyway, I'm going to explore my audio issues tomorrow. Today, I'm going to talk briefly about the fact that it's 10 years since I started working in the television industry in Scotland. So yeah, that's what today's vlog's about. Me! All oh, me! Today on Twitter I noticed it's 10 years since I made my debut appearance on Janish. Janish, for anyone who doesn't know, is basically the Gaelic version of Blue Peter. It's a children's magazine show, it's done all through the medium of Gaelic, and it was great, great fun being part of a fantastic team, many of whom I'm still in contact with today, and I consider them great friends. So what did I learn on Janish? I learned loads. I learned how to keep count using an earpiece in a live studio environment. I learned how to present, I learned how to script right. It was a great experience, an experience I'll treasure for the rest of my life. Why did I go into TV? Why? Why, why, why? You know, I've often asked myself that question. Why on earth pursue a career that's stressful at times, that's unpredictable, that's challenging, that's, you know, but also very, very rewarding. Seventeen years of age, very young, left home, went to Glasgow, made an idiot myself, came home to North East. Mara MacPhail, who's sadly no longer with us, encouraged me to get involved with a Gaelic drama group called Skipa Drama Uist. There we performed a play called Blar Chadhanish. Blar Chadhanish was about the Battle of Carnish that happened way, way back in back in the day, 19 Oat Cake, let's say. No, crikey, it was even before 19 Oat Cake. So the drama there, working with Mara, getting back into Gaelic gave me the kick up the backside I needed to kind of decide what I wanted to do with my life. So I went to Sky, to the Gaelic College, did Imolo Hoenshir, where I learned about the North Atlantic Rim. Then I wanted to work in Gaelic development. That didn't work out, so I went home to North East and I fished in a boat. I had the time of my life fishing. I love fishing. I can't speak highly enough of the people that work at sea. They work their backsides off. They deserve every single penny they earn. I loved it. And I'd like to think one day maybe I'd go back to sea. Maybe get my own wee prawn boat or something. When I retire, obviously. And then I got a phone call to see if I'd be interested in doing a TV course in Sky, which I was. If I wanted to get into telly production, it was something probably at the back of my mind. Kind of there subconsciously from when I was a young age, because my dad's uncle, Fred, Uncle Freddy, he was influential uh, way back in the day at the BBC in creating um, and, and fighting for Gaelic was in the BBC. So my father reckons he was an inspiration to me. So thank you, Uncle Fred, for maybe subliminally uh, encouraging me to maybe go into a TV career. And thanks also Mara MacPhail for um, bringing me back to Gaelic, getting me involved in drama, giving me the confidence I needed to, to perform as a, I suppose, a Janus presenter a few years after I got involved with the drama. I love drama. I think drama's a great way to bring people to language, you learn skills. It's good. It's good fun. I think I'll be talking too much, so on to the next one, which is... Old... I had to write this down because I knew I'd forget. Okay, after Janish, coming up next. to talk about after Janish. What did I do after Janish? Because they're no longer there, obviously. Time's moved on. When you're a children's TV presenter, 
if your heart's not in it all the time, it's probably very hard to do. I always said to myself that I would do it for as long as I didn't cringe doing whatever they asked me to do or whatever story or whatever character I had to play. I can't remember the specific incident, but there was something I, I was asked to do and I did it. I always did what I was asked because, you know, I understand the programme, but I cringed and I was cringing doing it and then I realised, Caxi, your heart's no longer in this. So what are you going to do? Are you going to stay, maybe not give your all in something that you should be giving your all in, week in, week out, entertaining kids at home, bringing Gallic to the house, making them feel part of the programme when they're 100 miles away, when they're 200 miles away. So m &E came along, offered me an opportunity to do sport for BBC Alipa. So I went to m &E TV and I learned a ton of stuff. It took my knowledge and understanding of TV production to the next level. I got to direct, I got to produce features for at halftime coverage, I got to speak to some of my sporting heroes, sporting idols. I got to present a programme called Club TV where we spoke with Sir Human and Tomboy, two old firm legends. It was great for me, great for my development, anchoring a show like that. I've also done some entertainment work, so it wasn't just solely sport at m TV. I was involved with Cochrane Gochran, it was a cooking show, studio based in Stornoway. We were involved with the Sheepdogs, I was involved with country music, just doing features, uh, light entertainment sort of stuff. So that was good, learning about sport, learning about entertainment. So. What am I doing now? I'm freelance, I'm working for myself. So, that's next. Freelance, working for myself. Me, ah! My own boss, scary, but it's good. Good fun. Okay, so right now I'm freelance, so that means working for myself, I'm my own boss, um, I'm responsible for finding my own work, um, doing each and every single job I get to the very best of my ability. So basically, what do I do as a freelance, um, I don't know what title I should be giving myself, some folks say I'm a broadcaster, um, yeah let's just call myself a broadcaster, so right now as a freelancer, freelance broadcaster. I do sports presentation, I do Gaelic news, some presentation for Raiden the Girl, Fesker, I'm a guest on Fesker sometimes, I do cartoon voiceovers, I do some research, basically um, anything that pays a wage. I'm quite aware that to make it as a presenter, maybe solely in Gaelic, it, it, it's very hard. Um, there's a lot of competition out there obviously, there's so many talented folk out there, but I think you've got to be versatile in what you do. Um, I'm not saying I'm fantastic at everything that I do, but I do every single job to the best of my ability and I hope whoever employs me realises that as well. So being freelance, you know, you're constantly learning, you're constantly having to be on the top of your game, which you should be in any sort of job, any job that you're doing, you should be performing to the very best of your ability. So being freelance has opened doors for me that I never thought would have opened. Um, I've learned so much more, I've met so many cool people, I've been 10 years pretty much to the day working full time in the television industry. I'm so, so incredibly thankful for every single opportunity that I've been given over the years. I'm still learning. It's so important to still learn. Why is learning important? Stay tuned. <laughs> That's so cheesy. Nobody knows the future, but we are all on a path in life. What we have to be is prepared for whatever challenge comes our way. I'm ambitious, I have plans in my head that I want to put in fruition eventually. I'm not in a position right now to do so because I've got so much more to learn. This is what I was talking about earlier. Life is about learning. You learn, and I think you have to have an open mind to want to learn as well. I want to have a production company of my own one day. I want to have a TV company. I want to be making my own programs, winning commissions, I want to have an idea, 
on a piece of paper and I want to follow it through to play out and to TX. I've been 10 years in the TV industry pretty much today but I've got so much more to learn. But obviously I want to provide a life for Claire and I. I'd also love a successful YouTube channel. Um, so I need to get into that. I need to learn more about editing, how to make the vlogs a bit more um, stylish maybe, put my own stamp on them all as well. But ultimately, I want to feel challenged. I want my brain to work um, and I want to give myself a kick up the backside. And I think this vlogging is going to help me maybe be a bit more creative, explore, explore what goes on in here, you know, you know. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically it just now. Okay, there's a lot going on in my head. Uh, hope this has been of interest. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel if you want. I think I've got that capability now to do so. I need to jazz my channel up, obviously. Follow me on Twitter, Callum underscore Macaulay. Okay, that's it. Boom. In vlog four, we had Kimura Hau. If you remember, that means how are you? So the answer to that, if you are well, you say Hami Gama. Hami Gama. I am well. Or you could just say Ha Gama, which means well. So, if someone asks you, Kimara Hau, and if you're well, you would say, Hamigama or Hagama. So, Hamigama is I am well, or Hagama is well. That now concludes today's vlog. It was all about me, so apologies if you lost interest. Tomorrow, I am going to be doing other stuff. Adios. Yeah.